finally, Salvo. Um, so I'd like to begin by talking about uh, how young people connect with the history. I think the best way of doing that is to talk about my early experience and what made me fall in love with history. Um, I was born in the late 80s into a very quirky squatting community um, in South London. But it was actually this dusty old book, uh, Robin Hood and His Merry Men, uh, that a, uh, a friend of my mother's actually gave to me um, when I was about six or seven, that really made me fall in love with history. Um, I think for me it was the, uh, the kind of diverging nature of you know, uh, the Middle Ages and uh, the fact that it felt like it was otherworldly to me. The fact that actually I didn't feel much of a connection with it made me feel more connected with it. Um, and I then went off on my own and I essentially formed my own line of inquiry, why did the Crusades happen? I wanted to know, you know, why is Robin coming back from the Crusades and that book on it? Um, why was you know, King John so mean? You know, there's little lines of inquiry that I did, you know, every bookshop we went into, I'd be rooting around trying to find it. Um, so for me, I think the curriculum that I experienced at school was perfect, you know, it was the sort of otherworldly experiences of castles and, uh, yeah, things that I really felt stimulated by. Um, now, in being a teacher now, I've realised that it's the familiar pertinence of history that many young people need, you know, that, that connectivity that they need to really feel stimulated by it. And I guarantee you, if you ask any group of inner city London students what's missing from the history curriculum, they will tell you we're missing black history, we're missing Asian history we're missing our own history, you know, all of the other history, fine, it's there, and if you look for it, you can find it, and there are plenty of teachers who teach very, very good, um, more traditional narratives, as I would call them. Um, so for me, I think a big, big challenge in becoming a history teacher was how do I change from that, uh, that history that I love to channeling it into a way that I can make it familiar for, for my students. Uh, so during my training year, uh, I had the, uh, the privilege of being able to teach immigration, 1945 to 1975, which is part of the, uh, the British uh, OCR unit when they were looking at changes in Britain. Uh, but I questioned, why 75? Why do we draw the line there? Why aren't we going a little bit further? Uh, 1981, for example, uh, a lot of you might remember that the Brixton riots happened. Um, so I said to my head department, I don't want to stop at 75, can we not do the Brixton riots? And he said, yeah, you know, crack on with that. Um, and the students absolutely loved learning about uh, this, this part of history. And I capped it all off by getting them to do an oral history project where they went away and they interviewed somebody about their experiences during the riots, uh, whether it be uh, watching the news, reading the newspaper, and they came back and I felt that that was a really enriching experience for them because they actually got to have that connectivity with the people who were alive during that time period. Or even if they weren't in the country during that time period, might have had a recollection or an encounter with somebody who did. And I felt that that really, really resonated well with them. Um, in terms of the other challenges I've faced, um, we mentioned before that uh, you know, what's going on outside of London uh, I had a job interview at a school in Bournemouth uh, a couple of years ago and me and my partner were thinking of relocating uh, to a quieter part of the country. Um, and during the interview, uh, I'm being interviewed by a head teacher, I'm being interviewed by two deputy heads, and one of them turns around and he goes, your CV is very, very impressive, but you keep mentioning the fact that you're, you think it's really important that young people learn about black history. We don't have any black students here. Why is it important? And I said, well, I don't think I'm a Viking. I don't think my family is a Viking, <laughs> but I still enjoy learning about Viking history. Um, now, what was good about that situation was that he actually came to me after and he said, you know, you, you actually, you challenged me, you changed my mind, and I think that might be one of the best answers I've ever had in an interview. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's good to know that there are people out there that are willing to actually change their mentality. Um, and now to also bring in a positive experience, I recently started teaching at the Brit School and in the assembly uh, where we launched Black History Month, the, the head teacher simply stood at the front and said, turn to the person next to you, 
wanting to talk about your black history. Everyone in the room. And I thought that singular act of, you know, you what's your black history, <coughs> everybody, whether you're a white student, black student, or whatever your background might be, felt that they were involved in black history. He opened the door with just a very simple activity. And I think we need more people like that in, in history education. Um, I've actually got a young student here at the front, uh, Benedict, uh, sorry to put him on the spot, uh, who's from my school, but you know, he, he's come down here because he feels strongly about black history, uh, which I think is just great to see. So thank you very much for coming down, Benedict. Um, where does it all start and where are we going to get more people like that head teacher and less people who are going to have a closed mindset to uh, teaching black history. I think it all begins with teacher training. Um, I cannot tell you the enriching experience I had during my training year with, uh, with Robin and Ample, uh, Robin and my tutor. Um, we had a very, very strong-minded cohort. Uh, we had a very, very strong-minded tutor in Robin. Um, and I think within the first month, I felt that I could not, I couldn't do it. It was too challenging for me in terms of the, the thought process that Robin wanted us to actually talk about. And, you know, I thought I was just going to walk into a classroom, present, perform, be a, be a performer. Um, but Robin changed my mindset uh, wholeheartedly to someone who now really, really cares about making sure these young people can resonate with what I'm teaching them. So I'm constantly thinking about my own teaching. Am I giving them history or am I teaching history in a way that they can really relate to it? I think that's fundamentally important and that all starts with good teacher training where you've got a, a mentor or a person who's asking you very, very particular questions about your teaching. Um, so I think in terms of producing more teachers who are reflective, I think it all comes down to teacher training and other people that are, are going to actually open your mind and, and change the way you think about, uh, about teaching. Um, I think the final thing I'd really like to say on that note is that um, I think we need to stop looking at young people as these empty vessels that need filling up. I think they are knowledgeable beyond measure and that's something that day in and day out I'm exposed to, especially at uh, school I'm at now where um, I have people like Benedict coming to me with, uh, with mag magazines going, so I think you should read this article. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I think I've definitely changed the way that I look at young people so we can learn an awful lot from them and I'd love uh, to see more young people at events such as this actually uh, talking about what they want from history education. What do they want? Uh, if we don't know what they want, we can't do anything to change it. Uh, so I definitely think that uh, young people are the future and they're also the present. We need to find out what they're thinking and what they're feeling about the issue that they are learning. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that you can agree with that to some degree. <laughs>